This is something that teenage me would have absolutely died to have. This begins the series of videos I'm going to be doing on various iPods, because to give you a sneak peek of what's on the docket, we have a touch, a touch, a 7th generation, 6th generation revision 2, and, well, that's about it, really. So, let's start with the mini, and the reason I'm doing this in multiple videos is because, one, I want to ease my editing workload, and two, my camera can't record for terribly long right now, and you're going to see why in a minute. So, this is the mini. This was the thing I wanted. The problem was I didn't have a lot of money back then, neither did my family. So it was kind of like one of those things where I kind of had to sit there with my CD player and just sulk and wish I had this type of thing. So pretty much this is me kind of getting back at that, that time. So the Mini is one of the easier iPods to flash mod, and that's exactly what I did here because this thing takes straight compact flash as far as storage is concerned. You need a specific type of compact flash, but as we can see here, I have a full-fledged compact flash card here. The camera is really not wanting to focus properly on the card because autofocus on this camera is garbage. Very similar, and the pinout is the same. So for this, I decided not to use compact flash like the actual standard because compact flash is expensive. Expensive is all hell today. So what I recommend is you grab something like this Obviously, it's in the iPod not in the package, but this is the very same one Draga one actually when he tried to convert his uh, Second generation iPod to flash and it didn't work there because the second generation iPod uses a 1.8 inch IDE drive rather than compact flash in their two different standards the pins may look the same, but they are not. This uses straight compact flash, so it's super easy to just get an adapter, slide it in, and be done. Now, the problem is all adapters are not created equal, so you really need to do your homework. This is the one that works. I actually read reviews on this before buying it, and it, a bunch of people confirmed it works with the Mini. The one I tried previously was a generic red one with sparkles on it, and that did not work even though it said it supported all the stuff the iPod needed. I would just restore it over and over, and it would get stuck in a loop and just never actually restore. So I returned it, bought that one, everything's happy now. So I also replaced the battery, one of these, with a instant 1300 milliamp hour battery. And while I don't think that is a true capacity because it just doesn't seem like you could fit something that large in here. Like for example, I believe the PlayStation 4 controller has a smaller battery than 1300. I could be wrong, but this is the battery, the stock battery for my DualShock 4, and as you can see, that's not going to fit in there. So, it does run longer than the stock battery, I believe. So, I mean, hey, at least that works, right? So, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. As you can see, oh, we don't want to do now playing or backlight. Oh, I guess we're going to shuffle songs, woo. About, and you can see why my camcorder doesn't have its storage anymore. <laughs> I took the 64 gig card out of it and put it in here, and... I did want to do 128. I do have a couple of ones. Well, I have a 128 card available, but I didn't really want to stick it in here because it's currently in my Switch. But this thing handles it very, very well. As you can see, I'm able to shuffle the songs, as you saw. And it's cool because, again, I don't have to worry about moving parts. I can just take this thing to the gym. It's going to be perfectly fine. I don't have to worry about it. The only issue was with the battery. The battery gauge was a little bit off, but it seems to have calibrated itself as of recently because now it's actually reporting somewhat correctly. So I'm glad that's actually happening because it used to be all over the place. But yeah, this thing, even in 2020, still retains a lot of usability. It's nice to have a device that is purely focused on music and does it exceptionally well. The DAC on this thing sounds exceptionally good even when driving my obsolete headphones that Apple has told me I need to throw away. Then they're like, oh, I guess we'll let you use those. Drives them perfectly well. The sound is really warm and kind of has a lot of punch to it, which I really like. But it doesn't sound like too bright, if you know what I mean. The other reason I like using this is because this thing absolutely sucks at being a music player these days. I mean, you don't even have a headphone jack. And the music app on iOS 13, at least for me, has been super crash happy. The other thing is that no matter what you do, you can't seem to escape Apple Music because here's you know my search my history up here but we have trending you know if I tap one of these it's gonna take me to radio I don't want to listen to radio I don't want any of this in my damn music app it's nice to have something that's just purely focused 
on music playing on my library and it won't bug me to su subscribe to Apple Music like every single time. So it's pretty much the mini in a nutshell. This thing just, I love the crap out of it as much as probably 13 year old me would have loved it. The only thing I'm gonna cap this off with is some good to know information because I do have a first generation mini chassis here. I do have a first gen mini somewhere. I'm not sure where it went, but if you're gonna buy one of these, I highly recommend you get the second gen mini because one, it is just easier to work with and we'll get into that in just a second. But two, the battery life is superior and I do not know how Apple managed to do that because the specs are pretty much the same between the two models. 400 milliamp hour battery, the CPU seems to be the same. So I'm wondering if there's some magical software fix that Apple decided to withhold for the first generation minis. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe someone can chime in with information on that front. These things are can fully restore just from your computer. You don't have to unplug it and find a power brick to complete the restore. It'll just do it all from the computer straight up. With older iPods, with mini first generation and the fourth and third gen, you can't fully restore them just from your computer. It'll ask you to plug it into an external power source. And for these first gen minis and fourth generation iPods, you can just take a standard USB dock connector cable and plug it into something like this which ironically looks like an iPod mini or a USB power brick and that'll satisfy it and it will complete the restore. The third gen classic unfortunately is a little bit more difficult. You're going to need a firewire cable because it will not charge over USB. It will sync over USB but it will not charge. So you can't just stick a USB onto it and it'll see that and charge off of it. But the minis, I mean this one, the second gen is ever so slightly easier to work on because of that in my opinion. And again, the battery life makes it worth it to grab a second gen over a first. So that said, I think I've said all I need to say on this little guy. Actually, one more thing. There is a reason why this is my main iPod and I'm going to show you very quickly. Just look at the way the scroll wheel acts. Super precise, super nice, works excellently every time. Now, what I wanted to make my daily use iPod is one of these. And as you can see, the wheel is kind of jumpy and it doesn't work precisely. That's kind of a bummer. <laughs> so pretty much that is why this guy is pretty much my main squeeze going into 2020. These, this will get a video, no doubt, but this is pretty much the one I, I love the most. So, oh my God, it's bonus content. So I figured I'd just show this off very quickly. You can see that this is in fact, Shocker of shockers, more bonus content, what the? So, I have my mini that we just talked about, and this is actually happening a couple days later. And then we have the first gen mini that I mentioned but couldn't find in time for the video because I just reorganized my room and lost, put it somewhere I don't remember. And this works, as we can see here. I can hit menu, we get our backlight. And this one has started normal, kind of normalizing on the battery, so it's starting to report correctly instead of immediately dropping to zero and staying there forever. But what happened was when I was first flash modding this one and I was having issues with the drive, I thought it was due to the drive cable going bad because of like all the times I had to unplug it and replug it and given that it was having trouble just booting from the stock micro drive. So I ordered a new cable and it was, you know, stupid cheap, thankfully. And then I had an extra battery because I got this one replaced and I handed down the battery from here into this one because it, while it's weak, it still does hold a charge. So I had an, another set of components. So I figured why not build another mini because I still have the green chassis and I just decided to plug this click wheel back in because I thought, mm, I wonder if it's actually dead. Turns out it wasn't. It actually does work, but the connection's a little finicky. But if we open, do this, it does actually work. And what's shocking is when Noah sent this to me, he said the battery was just dead, gone. It wouldn't hold a charge and it would die within seconds of being removed. So I put a full charge on this thing just for shits and giggles. And surprisingly, it's holding a better charge arguably than this one is. So kind of interesting how that worked. 
and I actually put this one on shuffle. This one has the micro drive in it, backlight on, ran it for like an hour and it only went down halfway on the battery. So obviously it's not a strong battery, but this is a lot better than the condition I supposedly received it in. So I don't have a use for this. Actually, let's go over this because uh, I had to kind of clutch this back together with spare parts. I don't have a top and bottom bezel, but I know you can get those from a place called iDemiGods, and I was pointed to them by a couple of users on r slash iPod, and so getting the parts for this should not be hard. The only issue I had was the screws, so I had to find new screws because the ones that came with this one were missing when I got it from Ryan. So I started looking at my parts bin, and this is why I save this stuff. This is a dead Note 5 display assembly and a back plate that, you know, it's whatever. And I left a little baggie of screws in here with all the screws that came out of this. And wouldn't you know it, a couple of them fit perfectly in this iPod. So I was able to get up and running, get it secured in there. And now we just need a top and bottom bezel. And this thing is pretty much a fully complete iPod. So this one is going to be going off to Ryan because... One, he gave me this one. Well, the board in here came out of this chassis originally, but he gave me this to rebuild. And since I rebuilt it and I don't really need it anymore because I got this one and this one, I'm just going to hand it off to him and he'll have fun with it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the little more bonus content. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and for the second time, I'll see you guys later.